Hello and welcome back to another SMCP video. Today we're going to be doing a Monster Hunter World tips video. This has been done in conjunction with Jackal Gaming. So today, without further ado, let's do this. Seven top pro tips to help fight Elder Dragons. So first up on the list is Kieran, this electrified unicorn with a bad attitude. There are many ways to negate this Thunder Pony's attacks. The first and foremost thing we need to get rid of is his Blight. If he inflicts you with this, it will increase his electric damage and stun chance. Now, if you're fighting the rank 49 tempered Kirin, this will cause almost certain death. So, what do we need to do here? We need to wear a set of armor that has blight resistance, namely the Xeno Jeeva set. It is blight resistance, okay? So it greatly protects against all element blights, nullifies all elemental blights. The Xeno Jeeva set, I realize will take you a while to grind, but come on, what else are you going to be doing from rank 29 to 49? I know. The set has the best armor value in the game and also protects you against this prancing pony's electrified prongs of punctuation. If not, and you find something with higher electric resistance, don't forget to bring null berries to nullify that blight. This is really the key to defeating him, is to get rid of the blight soon, and if you have the right gear, you can do it without even needing to use the items. Back. Keep an eye on your Thunder Mantle always, and as soon as your Thunder Mantle's back up, make sure you're using it, because that will save your life over and over again. Yes! Yes! Oh, baby! See, there you go. Take your time, learn the way he moves, and take him out, man. Kieran is a hard fight. Oh, yeah, baby! Woo! Now, moving swiftly on to the Kushaladora, this winged, windy elder wyvern could be causing you a lot of trouble due to its tendency to fly directly in its own hurricanes. So make sure you come in fully equipped with three flash pods and ten flash bugs. He has no diminishing returns on flashing and will fall to the ground, allowing you to hit him for a period of time every single time. The best way to make sure the flash hits is to wait until he looks at you and shoot it down at the ground in front of you. This is only when he's flying and this top tip will help you slay Dora before he ever has the chance to become an explorer. Oh, that time it didn't work. Okay, no, <laughs> he does have no diminishing returns, but he was already in the middle of an animation, so try again. There we go, down. We used all three of our flash bombs, but we remember we bought 10 flash bugs. We're gonna use those flash bugs quickly to make three more flash bombs because you can only carry three on you at a time find them in our infantry equip them again get down see there's that flash bomb again exactly what you need to do for this guy he's flying around making your life a misery make sure you pull him out of his own tornado first before flashing him there we go being right at your feet right in front of his face there you go there's another one straight down again Ping. oh buddy oh i don't have any more so remember to go to your crafting list real fast make those three more flash pods on the ground, boom, there he is, time, ping down again, the easiest tactic to take this guy down, just come with a shit ton of flash bombs and loads of flash flies to make more and you will succeed, you will kill him very easily, so if you're having any troubles with this dragon, please heed my words, come in with flash bombs and you will have no problems from then on. So next on the list is Teostra the fire breathing lion. Here again, we need flash pods. Now you might be thinking, but SMCP and Jackal, I tried using flash pods before and they had no effect. At which point I'd say, yeah, you're right. Unless you tried at a very specific time that can save you and your whole party from complete annihilation. There's a timing when Teostra jumps into the air to use his ultra AOE finishing move, which can one shot many low resistant armor sets. You can flash him and be the hero of your team. Normally you should leave this job to a ranged person. This knocks this flame-covered lion to the ground, saving the team, allowing for extra time hitting him while he is down. You can do this whenever he is in the air. If you see him fly, flash him down. There's another flame pillar attack, a flame breath attack he does. Make sure you flash him out of the air then too. That's right in front of his face, that took him out of the air, and if there was any melee classes around him at that point, that would have saved their life. Okay, so number four, Val Hazak, who has another type of affliction. Now, the first time you fight him, Nullberry should be fine, as his moves and debuffs do not hit very hard. When you pass rank 50 and start hitting those tempered elders, you have to really prepare yourself for his Effluvia Affliction. This affliction halves your HP, and you'll need to use a Nullberry to get your full HP back. You can nullify this completely, though, with Effluvial Mastery, a skill that is on armor, gems, and certain charms. This will completely nullify this devastating HP cloud surrounding you. 
My best advice would be to grind at least the Valhazak leggings before going into a tempered fight. This way you have a great resistance, which is actually and truly really great. I fought him last night with just those, and I used only one null berry the entire fight. Okay, so on to the final boss, Zeno Jiva. Now this monstrous last boss probably had you scream in terror when you first saw the size of him. With his massive laser blast, it can be difficult to get by. Yet, there is a way to use his big destructive beam against himself. There is a move wherein he gets up on his hind legs and fires a beam down at the floor, following you around the stage. At this point, you need to run towards him. This will make him shoot the beam all around his own body. After a while dodging this, he will form a crater beneath himself, where he falls in, becoming trapped like a self-made pitfall trap, where you and your team have free time to wail on him. Okay, number six, Zora Magdros. Now this one may seem a little bit basic and a little bit stupid, but it took me and my friends a long time to realize this was possible. You can, wait for it, move, wait for it, the, wait for it, cannons. Okay, you can move the cannons. Now, like me and my friends, you may have been waiting for the Goliath Rock Fire Elder to fall directly into the line of sight of the cannon without realizing you could just go to the front of the cannon on either side and push it in a desired direction. This made it far easier as when you jumped down onto the boat, two NPCs would have loaded the cannons to maximum capacity, five cannonballs, but each one of them would be aimed just too far back to hit him. Now, no problem, redirect that shit and fire away. Now this next tip for Nergiganti is very, very specific and only works with three of the weapons. That will be the charge blade, the sword and shield, and the jewel blades. Now, everybody knows I'm sure that you can run down a hill and slide down the hill doing a jumping attack. Now, I realize you probably know this, but what you may not have known is that you can do this slide attack while your weapon is drawn. Yes, no need to sheath that weapon. Not only that, but you do an enhanced version of it with an increased amount of attacks and range. It does one extra slice at the beginning. This is done by standing on the hill you want to attack from and doing what usually is a lunging attack, circle and triangle together. You will start to slide down the hill. Only when you press triangle will it start one of the coolest looking animations in the game. You will swing your sword right and left and end with a launched up and down swipe. This move is perfect for getting around the many of Nergiganti's huge forward facing moves. You slide down through him, attack, and then have the chance to mount at the end. This move will truly help while taking down the Monster Hunter World's well-deserved and awesomely designed flagship monster. Straight through him over and over again, then you mount him. So the easiest way to build Nergiganti, especially in this first area, is you just keep doing that move Run up, come back down. Okay, thank you very much for watching. That was my seven pro top tips for Monster Hunter World. If you want to watch more Monster Hunter World footage, just look in the description box below. That'll be mine and Jackal's channel. I also have a full review of Monster Hunter World just down in the description box where I go in depth for 20 minutes talking about what the game gets right and what it gets wrong. Please don't forget to check that out. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you like what you saw and also hit that thumbs up button. Uh, anyway, thank you very much for watching. This has been SMCP and I'm out. No one watches streams in the first 10 seconds. No one watches streams in the first 20 seconds. No one. I can do what I want. If I want to pretend I'm on a horse, I pretend I'm on a horse all day. If I want to sit on a cushion, I will sit on a cushion too all day. No one watches the beginning of any stream. Also, the stream is kind of glitchy. Now we're gonna play the game that I'm playing. My girlfriend's watching me act like a fool.